Good day, Ma'am Gray. I'm P. Anatabag, and I'm your student from BSED Mathematics 1B. So out of the nine primary accounts, I have chosen to discuss the first voyage around the world by Antonio Picasseta. So in this discussion, Ma'am, we will travel back in time and rediscover one of the integral parts of the Philippine history and talk about the major happenings in this document and explain its importance in understanding the history of the Philippines. So, first and foremost, let me present to you, ma'am, the content of this presentation. But all throughout this video, we will be discussing about the background of the author, the historical background of the document, the content and contextual analysis of the important historical information found in the document, and lastly, the contribution and relevance of the document in understanding the grand narrative of Philippine history. So, without further ado, let's all now go to the background of the author. So, who wrote the first voyage around the world? Well, it is no other than Mr. Antonio Picafetta. So, Picafetta was an Italian scholar and explorer who was born sometime in 1491 in Vicenza, which is a town about 100 kilometers west of Venice, Italy. He is the eldest son of Giovanni Picafetta to his second wife, Angela Zoga. He studied astronomy, which is the study of celestial objects, geography, which is the study of physical features of the Earth, and cartography, which is the study of creating maps. Aside from this, he also worked in the ships owned by the Knights of Rome. Antonio Pigafetta is a well-educated young man, possessing avid curiosity of the world around him. That's why he joined the delegation of Monsignor Francesco Chirigatti when he was assigned as papal nuncio to Spain in 1519. In the same year, he became acquainted with the lucrative spice trade and heard the news of voyage to be undertaken by Ferdinand Magellan. Well, with much excitement, he presented his credentials to Magellan and to the Casa de la Contratación, which is the office in charge of voyages to New World. Well, good thing, man, that he was admitted as one of the sobresalientes or the supernumeraries. So he joined the expedition and survived the challenges and catastrophes that they encountered along the way. Well, he even got wounded in the Battle of Macana as we know, ma'am. So after this, he returned to Spain on September 6, 1522 aboard the Victoria, which is the only ship that was able to return home since the rest of the fleet was gone. The Santiago was shipwrecked, the San Antonio was overtaken, the Concepcion was burned, and the Trinidad was abandoned man. While he was, he was with one Sebastian Alcano and more than a dozen more survivors. After this, he presented himself to Charles V, a book written by his own hand, in which were set down the things that happened from day to day during their voyage, which is obviously now known as the first voyage around the world, which is a detailed tale of exploration and exotica of the first circumnavigation. Well, sadly, Emperor Charles was apparently not impressed and Pigafetta received no honor beyond his wages. That's why on his way home to Italy, he passed by Portugal and France and shared to the people the things he knew about Magellan's expedition. Good thing, since in Italy, the Pope was impressed enough to give him residence while he prepared his manuscript for publication. And then, he later joined the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem in its battle against the Turks and died sometime in 1534. And that's it, ma'am, the background of the author. That's all about Antonio Picafetta. So now, let's proceed to the historical background of the document. First voyage around the world. So since then, spices were in high demand among Europeans due to their many uses, including food preservation, flavor improvement, and medicine. That's why Portugal and Spain were locked in a fierce competition to see who could discover and claim new land in order to supply European aristocracy with the spices they craved. 
And here comes the Treaty of Tordesillas which was an agreement between Spain and Portugal to settle conflicts over lands exported to Christopher Columbus. Well, it was effective at that time. As you could see, there was a land separating the boundaries or the territories between Portugal and Spain. In 1505, Magellan, in service to Portugal, joined the fight, traveling to India, Malaysia, and Indonesia. However, he was accused of illegal trading and fell out with Manuel I, who turned down his proposal to locate a new site. Magellan then abandoned his Portuguese loyalty, transferred his allegiance to Spain to King Charles V, and eventually King Islam. In search of spices, the Spaniards, on the other hand, approved Magellan's plan to go to the east via westward direction after Portugal turned down his land. Magellan led an expedition of five ships with 237 men. So the five ships are San Antonio, Santiago, Concepcion, Victoria, and Trinidad. However, only one remained and returned to Spain after the expedition, which is the Victoria. Pigasetta wrote the chronicle on board in one of the five ships during the expedition. The first voyage around the world Written by Pigafetta in his narrative and cartographic record journal, Chronicles of Magellan Expedition. So this means that the first voyage around the world is just a part of a bigger picture of the main expedition entitled Chronicles of Magellan Expedition. So that's it. That's all about the historical background of the, of the document. So now, let's proceed to the content and contextual analysis of the first voyage around the world. So, well, the best storyteller is the one who not only knows the story, but saw it and experienced it. That's why I could say that Pigafetta is a credible source of information since he experienced firsthand the circumnavigation. Well, actually, the, the book is one of the most cited documents by historians who wish to study the pre-colonial Philippines. So, the further ado, let's proceed now. On March 16, 1521, Magellan and his crew arrived in the Philippines Island, or what we call as Islands of Ladron. They first reached the island of Zamal, or is currently known as Samar. On March 18, 1521, there came some natives giving signs of joy for the presence of the crew of Magellan. Plus, you can see here are native Filipinos. They are also undressed as per defined by the book written by Pigafetta. Magellan named the place Islands of Humuno as the archipelago of San Lazarus due to the several islands located in the district. While well, archipelago of San Lazarus was the primitive name of the Philippines. And Magellan succeeds in his plan to influence the fate of the people on the island he has conquered. As the first mass in our country happened on March 31 and on Eastern Day. The first cross was then set up in Mazawa or Limazawa as wished by Magellan for the benefits of the natives man. The native Filipinos have their idols before and a god which they called Abba, but they threw this belief away as they embraced Christianity which Magellan introduced. Jalan and his crew went to Zubu on April 7 upon hearing that good reports about the island from the king of Mazawa that the people are now embracing Christianity, but they are not immediately warmly welcomed for they were asked to pay tribute, but of course Magellan refused to do so. And that refusal led to a negotiation to a notary. Well, the king of Zubu asked for a drop of their blood as a sign of their friendship both of them afraid. So this will be proven in the second week of the year. On April 14th, Magellan spoke to the king and encouraged him to be a good Christian by bringing up or burning all of the idols and worship the cross instead. The king of Cebu was baptized as a Christian and after eight days all the island's inhabitants were already baptized. That was great and amazing. That's why we could conclude that the captain's power to influence the fate 
of the people has reaped. But then it doesn't just end there. Since Pigafetta also accounted how Magellan's slave and interpreter named Henry betrayed them and told the king of Cebu that they intended to leave as soon as possible. Henry and the king of Cebu conspired and betrayed what was left of Magellan's men. The king invited this man to a gathering where he said he would present the jewels that he would send for the king of Spain, but none of that happened since a bloody incident happened. Pigafetta was left on board the ship and was not able to join the 24 men who went to the gathering because he was nursing his battle wounds. He was actually lucky at that time. Since the natives had slain all the men except the interpreter and the one Serrano who shouted at the men on the ship to pay ransom so that he would be spared, but he was left on the island for they refused to go back to shore. The fleet abandoned Serrano and left Cebu to their journey around the world. And that ends our content and contextual analysis of the first voyage around the world map. While considering the inadequacy of marine instruments at that time, I can say ma'am that the Magellan's voyage can be considered as the greatest single trip ever undertaken. While in terms of the hardships the men endured and the courage they displayed, they remained strong and I believe that Magellan's maritime exploit has perhaps never been surpassed. Until now ma'am. For the last part of our discussion now, let us now proceed to the contribution and relevance of the document. So the first voyage around the world is a proof of the richness, governance, and independence of our country in the pre-colonial era. Christianity, as the largest religion in the world, was propagated in the Philippines by Ferdinand Magellan. The fate of the natives before is just about raising hands and clapping, building different images of their idols until Magellan introduced Christianity to them. It was accepted and practiced by Filipinos and has been a considerable part of our culture and beliefs. That's why we are somehow grateful for Magellan and his team. The account of Pigafetta in which Philippine historiography because it contains essential details about the conditions of the Visayan Islands in the 16th century. Moreover, local textbook writers use his book as their historical information source about the beginning of Christianity in the Philippines. The document also narrated the status or inferiority of the Filipinos in warfare, manner of dressing, and system of writing. Additionally, the first voyage around the world provided a description, location, and distances of the places visited, thereby enhancing cartography knowledge at that time. He also proved to other explorers and the people today that circumnavigating the world was possible and that the Earth is, fl is not flat but a sphere. They discovered a large body of, a body of water on the side of the American continent, which they named the Pacific Ocean. Moreover, they found a strait that connected the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and called it the Strait of Magellan in recognition and in tribute to Ferdinand Magellan. And that's it now for the contribution and relevance of the first voyage around the world. To wrap it up, we could say that Pigafetta's journal is a vital piece not only to Philippine history, but also to world history as well, since he was able to narrate the events that transpired in a way that gives the readers like me a clear picture of what it was like to be part of the first voyage around the world, and I salute him for that. So that's it, ma'am. Thank you for listening, and... I hope you have learned at the same time enjoyed my discussion about the first voyage around the world. So thank you ma'am and goodbye.